Today we will how to the budget for your wedding without having to hire a personal planner. Stay tuned. Good afternoon how tooligans and today we are beginning our wedding planning series with the first thing that I always start with budget. I will be detailing how to plan your budget and keep your records throughout the planning process to make sure you don't go over budget. Now, I know weddings come in all sizes and varieties and it doesn't matter how small or large or crazy or whatever you want your wedding to be. Everybody has to have a budget. I'll be breaking down how to make your budget and also showing you the template that I used for my own wedding out of my very own wedding planning book. Please do take a moment to hit the subscribe button below and the bell for notifications on when I'm posting new content. Also do comment below and let me know how your wedding planning process is going so far. I'll be posting new content every How Tuesday, so please do join me and become your most awesome you. Now, let's get started. Six tips to get your budget fixed to be wedding vips. Number one, decide who is paying for what. Okay, I'm gonna be covering a lot in this video, so I'm breaking it down into small tasks so that you don't have to math so hard because mathing can be kind of hard when you've got lots and lots of other things to worry about. Some of you will be following a very traditional wedding path. Others of you, not so much. And so this step is gonna be even more important for you. This step is really how you're going to kind of set the tone for your wedding and decide how your respective families are going to handle it or not handle it. The most important thing that you need to keep in mind is this. I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. I'm not trying to burst your bubble. I just want to keep you realistic. This is coming from a kind and loving womb of comfort. Your friends and your family are very, very excited for you. They really are, but and this is a big but. They have their own lives, and they have a certain amount of interest in helping you on your big day, but they still don't work for you. Please realize, whenever a friend or a family member offers to help you on anything for your wedding, you must be gracious, even if you're not gonna take them up on it. We'll cover that in another episode. Okay, PSA over. Traditionally, the family of the bride will pay for the wedding, and the family of the groom will pay for the rehearsal dinner and the honeymoon. Now, you kind of have to be delicate on how you approach this. You don't really want to demand that your future father-in-law pick up the bill. That will not bode well for your relationship in the future. It is important, however, to figure out who is paying for what as early on in the planning process as possible. My recommendation is to maybe casually bring up all the wedding planning you're starting to get into. Maybe even mention how you're starting to make a budget for it. At that point, that's when you start to let them ask you questions. If they have any intention of helping you pay for or purchasing a part of your wedding, they're gonna be pretty upfront about it. If you feel like during the conversation you're having to pry their wallet out of their pocket, then they probably have no intention of helping pay. So move on. I'll be putting a screenshot of the template that I made of my budget here on the side. And it actually has a special column, one for what the family pays for and the other for what the bride and groom or couple pays for. In my experience, I was told what my family and my husband's family were comfortable budgeting and I made it my mission to come in under those budgets. That way your relationship with your fam and your soon-to-be fam will still be good. If you do find yourself alone in paying for your own wedding, then this is the best possible time to find that out. You don't wanna go find stuff, fall in love with it, then find out you can't afford it. This is why you have to make a budget 
first. Wedding items are marked up a ton because vendors know you're going to form an emotional attachment to that out of season flower or this designer dress. And mostly just because Pinterest told you to. Six tips to get your budget fixed to be wedding vips. Number two, decide how deep your pockets are. And by that I mean, now you know how much money is coming from outside sources. So you need to figure out how much you and your fiance are comfortable spending on your own wedding. Listen very carefully to me on this. Your little shoulder devil is going to try and tell you it's okay to go a little bit out of budget. This is a day you're gonna remember for the rest of your life. I promise you, this is not the way you want to handle this. You won't be telling your grandkids 30 plus years from now how you had dahlias at your wedding instead of hydrangea, and it made all of the difference. Find out how much money you and your fiance can comfortably spend after you pool how much money the two of you make a month, subtract everything that you have to pay, like rent, utilities, food, gas, whatever. The fun money that you happen to have left to go on dates or out to dinner. That's the money that you can count in your budget. Nothing more than that though. Once you have that dollar amount per month, then take that dollar amount and multiply it by the number of months that you anticipate to be engaged. If you wanna have a 12 month engagement, multiply it by 12. Obviously, you don't have a venue or a date yet, if you're following my tips, but a ballpark number will work for now. Lastly, once you've figured out how much money you can spend in the entirety of your engagement, you can look into your savings account to find out what you can responsibly remove to add to that money that you can put towards your wedding. Remember, a lot of newlyweds want to maybe buy a house or start a family. You're gonna need money. Don't put yourself in a financial pickle because if you do, it will make that first year of married life that much harder. Six tips to get your budget fixed to be wedding vips. Number three, figure out a rough guest count. If you watched my episode on planning a Labor Day party that included 51 different hot dog recipes, which you totally should, totally should, like, as soon as this one's over, go and find that one and check it out. It's a lot of fun. Enough of that. Basically, you need to think of your wedding like a per person cost instead of a per item cost. If I told you right now that flowers would cost you somewhere in the neighborhood of $5,000, would you think that you're getting a total deal or a total ripoff? What if I said your wedding will cost 150 bucks per person? Does that make it a little bit easier to wrap your head around? If you can decide if you're gonna have 50, 100, 150, 200 or more people at your wedding, then you can take that dollar amount that you've just figured out and apply it to how many people you think will be coming. For example, if you have $10,000 and you wanna invite 300 people, that's gonna be dang near impossible. You can't even have a full meal of appetizer, drink, meal, and dessert at Outback Steakhouse for 33 bucks. If you've seen that Labor Day episode I mentioned earlier, you might remember that I said that about half of who you invite will end up coming to your party. With a wedding, it's a little bit more like two thirds. So if you invite about 100 people, not 100 couples, then you can expect for about 66 people to come. So yeah, Figure out how many people you want to come. Six tips to get your budget fixed to be wedding vips. Number four, discuss your must haves. I hope you've been doing all of this together as a couple anyway, because there won't be a lot of the wedding that you will be planning together. And it's nice to go ahead and find out what's going to make the day special for both of you. Sit down with your fiance and discuss what elements of your wedding are non-negotiable. Do you insist upon having a three-tiered champagne buttercream wedding cake? Can your fiance not imagine the reception not having a couple games of cornhole? Figure out what these things are and write them down. And I do mean non-negotiable. Something along the lines of, I insist we serve alcohol. 
not something that you could take or leave. My advice on this is to keep it general. If you don't, you'll begin to narrow your options before you've even seen what they are. For example, if you decide that you are going to definitely have an outdoor wedding, you're going to limit the time of year that you can have that wedding, which might make it too hot for older or weaker guests. And surprise, you're in the most expensive wedding season of the year. Just saying. The best kind of things to discuss is whether you insist upon having a plated meal or you insist upon getting married in a church. Okay, y'all go think about it. Six tips to get your budget fixed to be wedding vips. Number five, research the wedding industry. Please, please, please look at the budget that I have created. There's a lot of obvious costs for a wedding, but there's also a lot of hidden ones. Let's say you have $800 for reception music and the DJ that you love has agreed to play your wedding for $800. Score, right? Did you know it was customary to tip your vendors? And with the vendors that are going to be actually working your wedding, it's also customary to provide a vendor meal to them. Now you're up to $975 ish and most importantly over budget now you have to cut 175 dollars from somewhere else maybe you can't afford that veil you wanted so badly after all i am happy to help you figure out what those hidden costs are before you get caught like that so please do comment your questions below and as a how to again community I'm sure we can make this wedding planning process easier on everybody. Six tips to get your budget fixed to be wedding vips. Number six, put all the info you just made together. Now that you have steps one through five completed, it's time to put it all together. Were you Pinterest planning a six figure wedding and now you just figured out you can afford a four figure wedding? It's okay. Don't throw yourself crying onto a bed like some Disney princess. By making some changes here and there, you can still get that dream wedding that you've always wanted. Maybe you can nix the engagement party. I did, and I sure as heck didn't miss it. Maybe you can get married in March instead of June. Get creative. Thank you again for joining me on your wedding planning or anything planning journey. I look forward to hearing from you in the comments, and of course you can find me on Facebook and Twitter at HowToHilton. I will do my best to answer any comments or questions in a timely manner, but do always realize I definitely reading them. I'm probably gonna try and do one more wedding planning episode covering engagement parties and engagement photo shoots before I move on to planning the best Disney World vacation ever. I am such a kid in an adult's body. I'm super excited to take you on that journey with me too. Check back every Tuesday and be sure to become a How Tooligan by subscribing below. Click the bell for notifications on when I post new content and do comment and introduce yourself and let me know what you would like me to cover next. Thanks for stopping by.